In this video, I'd like to show you how you can create an ambient occlusion pass using Mental Ray for Maya. We'll take that ambient occlusion pass and composite it in Photoshop so we can create more realistic contact shadows in your renders. Ambient occlusion is a way of creating shadows in your scene from indirect lighting. And those indirect shadows help to increase the realism in your scene because it darkens the areas of your model that would not be able to receive direct lighting or bounced lighting. And it's a simpler and cheaper way of creating realistic effects without having to resort to global illumination. So for example, in this scene, I've created a series of blocks that are increasingly spread out across the distance of the scene. And you'll notice that there are no lights in this scene, and that's because ambient occlusion does not need any lights to calculate the effect. And when we look at the rendered ambient occlusion pass from this scene, you can see here on the left where the geometry is packed more tightly that the space between the pieces of geometry is rendering as black. However, here on the right where the space between the blocks is greater, you can see the ambient occlusion effect is lighter. And that shift from dark to light here in this render is based on the proximity or the spacing of the geometry in the scene. And this ambient occlusion effect is applied evenly across your entire scene. It's not affected by lights or shadows. As a matter of fact, there are no lights in this scene at all. So I'll show you now how you can create an ambient occlusion pass using Mental Ray for Maya. So I have my Maya scene open here, and I'll switch over to my perspective camera so you can see how I have this scene up. So I've got my camera that I'm using to render the scene here, and I've got this geometry plane here that's separating my scene into two zones. The geo that's above the plane is being lit by this spotlight, and the geometry that is below the plane is receiving the indirect light. So I'll show you also that I'm not using any mental ray shaders. These are all standard Maya software shaders and I'm using a Lambert setup here that I've assigned to each one of these pieces of geometry. And because I'm using Maya software shaders here, it allows me to render my scene using an ambient light. So the ambient lighting is contributing the indirect lighting to the scene and the spotlight is contributing the direct lighting to the scene. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. In this rendered image, the geometry above the plane is receiving direct lighting from the spotlight. And the geometry below the plane is receiving indirect lighting from the ambient light. And this works even though I'm rendering in mental ray because I'm using the Maya software shaders. If I was to remove the ambient light from the scene, it would render like this, where we would only be seeing the direct lighting contribution from the spotlight. But because I have the ambient light turned on, and I've set the ambient shade on that light to zero, that's what's contributing that indirect lighting to our scene. So let's a look at the lighting setup. I'll switch back here to the rendering camera and show you how we can set up our ambient occlusion passes. So I'm gonna come up here and open up the Render Settings dialog box. And in the Render Settings dialog box, I wanna make sure I'm rendering using Mental Ray. Once I've selected Mental Ray, I can see these tabs across the top, and I'm gonna come over here and select the Passes tab. Inside the Passes tab, I can come over here and select the Add Passes button, and this lists all the passes that are available inside of Mental Ray. I'm going to select the passes that I want to include. So I'll start off by selecting my ambient occlusion pass, and then I'll scroll down and select the direct radiance pass. So if I press my command button and select direct radiance, I can select both of those passes together. Now I can click on create and close, and those passes are added to my scene passes. In order to render those passes, I have to associate them with the current render layer. So I'll come down here and click on the associate button, and now these two passes will be included in my render layer. Even though I've added my ambient occlusion pass here in the render layer, it still won't render the ambient occlusion until I enable it. So I'll come up here to my indirect lighting tab, and then I'll scroll down to the bottom where it says ambient occlusion. If I expand that section, I can toggle on ambient occlusion, and the raise setting controls the smoothness of the ambient occlusion pass. So typically 64 rays is not enough to get a smooth render. So I'll uh, retype that to be 128 rays, which is double the default setting. Now that I've enabled ambient occlusion, my next step is to set up my naming convention. So I'll come over here and select the common tab, and scroll down to the section labeled File Output. Here where it says File Name Prefix, I'm gonna double click in there and delete the default setting there. 
And when I right click in this field, I get a list of choices of how I can name my rendered images. So the first thing I want to add to that list is the insert scene name, and that will show up here in my file name prefix. Then I'm going to add an underscore to separate that from the next name, which is going to be my render pass type. When I select that, it will label each image with the name of the render pass and the scene that generated it. Now I can close my render settings dialog box and I'll come up here to my rendering menu and choose render batch render. And when I submit that batch render, it will go through and render a separate image file for each one of the passes that I've set up and it'll output those images in my Maya images folder. So now that the rendering is finished, I can switch over here to my finder view and navigate to my current Maya project. And inside the Maya project, I'll select the images folder. And what you can see here is that a separate folder has been created for each one of our render passes. So here you can see the ambient occlusion pass and the direct radiance pass that only shows the direct light from our spotlight. And then finally the master beauty pass, which is a combination of the direct light from our spotlight and the indirect lighting from the ambient light. So now we can take these three passes and composite them in Photoshop. I'll switch over to the Photoshop application. And what I'd like to do is open up each one of these separate render passes in its own layer inside of Photoshop. And there's a script that comes with Photoshop that allows us to do that. So I'll come up here and say file scripts and choose load files into stack. And in the dialog box, I can browse for my render passes. So I'll go to my current uh, Maya project and the images folder there. And I'll select the ambient occlusion pass and open that. And then I'll select the direct irradiance pass and open that as well. And finally, I'll select the master beauty pass and include that also. So now I have all three of those passes loaded here. And when I click OK, Photoshop will run the script and load each one of those images as its own layer. So it's created the layers here in Photoshop in the order we selected them. And what I'd like to do is just drag the ambient occlusion layer down below the direct radiance layer so it's in the middle of our stack. And if I want to apply the ambient occlusion layer to our master beauty, I'm just going to turn off the direct radiance for a second here. And with the ambient occlusion layer selected, if I choose multiply as my blend mode, what you can see here is that it's applying the ambient occlusion pass on top of the beauty pass so that the brighter parts of the ambient occlusion are transparent, but the darker parts of the images are adding contrast and shadows to the indirect lighting portion of our image. So if I toggle that on and off here, you can see how the ambient occlusion is contributing down here in the indirect lighting, but it's having a negative effect here in our direct lighting setup. Here, if I toggle it off, you can see that the direct lighting is hitting the sphere and creating a nice shadow underneath the sphere. But when I turn on the ambient occlusion, it's applying the shadow from the ambient occlusion in the area that should be receiving direct lighting. So we need to compensate for that, and that's what we're going to use our direct irradiance layer for. So I'll come back here to my ambient occlusion pass and set that back to a normal blend mode. And I'll come back here and enable the visibility on our direct irradiance pass. With the direct irradiance layer selected, I'm going to change the blend mode on that to a screen mode. And what that enables us to do is to only see the ambient occlusion contribution in the areas that are not receiving direct light. So if I toggle the visibility on and off on that, here you can see where the ambient occlusion is still being included, but it's only being included in the areas that are not receiving direct light. Even with this screen mode enable on the direct irradiance, you can still see it's a little bit dirty up here. It's not, it should be as bright as this side of the cube, should be as bright up here. So what we can do is use a levels adjustment to control the contrast that we're getting out of our direct irradiance pass. So I've got the direct irradiance pass selected here, and I'm going to add an adjustment layer, and I'll choose the levels tool from that adjustment layer. When you add an adjustment layer like that, it applies to all of the levels in the scene, but I'd like that to apply to only our direct irradiance layer. So I'm going to come up here into the adjustment layer and toggle on a single layer mode so it will only apply to the direct irradiance level directly below the adjustment. Up here in the adjustments dialog box, you can see the controls for our levels adjustment. 
This histogram is showing us the dynamic range of our direct irradiance layer. There's a lot of wasted space to the right of our histogram that's not being utilized because the brightest pixels in the image are only 50% gray. If I click on my white point and drag that to the left so that now it starts right about at the middle of the histogram, you'll notice how that has increased the brightness of our direct irradiance level. So I'll drag that back again to show you the before and after. And as I drag it here, it's brightening the levels of our direct irradiance layer. So now we've got a cleaner ambient occlusion contribution to our image. Now that we've made that adjustment, I'd like to combine these three separate layers into one single layer. So I'll shift select those three layers and then drag and drop them onto this folder icon. And that will create a single group folder for all three of those layers. The next step is to apply that single layer as a blend mode to our beauty pass. So with the group selected, I'll come up here to our blend mode and choose multiply. And what that will do is take the darkest parts of our ambient occlusion pass and superimpose them on top of the beauty pass while leaving the brighter parts of the image transparent. So if I toggle the visibility of that ambient occlusion layer, you can see how the direct lighting is not being affected by the ambient occlusion. But down here where we have indirect lighting, the ambient occlusion effect is visible as well as here in the shadow areas of our objects that are not receiving the direct lighting. One last step is that I can apply a color correction to our ambient occlusion layer so that we can control how much ambient occlusion is contributing to our rendered image. So I'll select my group layer here, and then I'll select the options menu for the layers dialog box, and I'm going to choose merge group. And what that does is flatten out that group into a single layer. Now that that's a single layer, I can come up here and add an adjustment layer to that, and I'll choose levels, and I'll toggle on the single layer switch so it's only affecting our ambient occlusion layer. And now in the levels adjustment dialog box, I can click on the gamma adjustment and drag that to the left and it will reduce the amount of the ambient occlusion contribution to our scene. If I click on the gamma slider and drag it to the right, you can see how it's making the ambient occlusion contribution darker. So that's a simple way that you can control how much ambient occlusion is added to your scene after you've composited that rendered layer. So those are some of the steps you can use to generate an ambient occlusion pass inside of Maya using Mental Ray, and then composite the ambient occlusion on top of your beauty pass in Photoshop to create a more realistic shadow contribution to your indirect lighting.